how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project we're working on building the really large wildlife park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode we're going to be including a habitat for some ostriches and some sable antelope. If that does sound good to you and if you really like today's video, please do consider leaving a like down below and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. With that intro out of the way, let's talk about what it is we're going to be doing today. And like I said, we're going to be continuing our African section here with another habitat adjacent to our big savanna habitat, which is going to be including some ostriches and some sable antelope. These are both animals that could have fit in the larger savanna habitat, but I thought it'd be nice to kind of separate them out a little bit. And maybe even like with some zoos, what they do is they cycle animals through different habitats. And maybe that's something they would have done here, you know, cycling these animals between the two different habitats. And I thought it just ended up having a nice aesthetic. Uh, one problem I actually had with this habitat is because of the location of it, it ends up being one of the few habitats in the game, uh, in this park, sorry, that is um, actually like almost a perfect square or rectangle. And generally with habitats, I try to avoid that because it feels very like... Like that's something all zoos used to do before we knew about animal welfare and stuff. It used to be just square enclosures with not much in them. But I think when you do a square enclosure, if you really take the time to, you know, furnish it with the foliage, with the rocks, um, give it terrain variation, give it, um, of course, putting all the enrichment, it still works really well as a good habitat for these animals. And I think this one ends up looking pretty nice if I do say so myself. While I'm building all this, Let's talk about the two species we're going to be including today. Um, one of which is quite new because I haven't really put it in any of my parks before. I have used the ostrich before, way back when in my first park build on the channel in Boomy Reptile Sanctuary, which is the, the ostrich. Um, the ostrich itself is a really cool animal. I, I personally think uh, all ratites um, or ratites, I think they're ratites actually, they are the um the kind of the order of birds which are just those really the big flightless ones with the long legs the long neck cassowaries emus rias and bizarrely the kiwis are included in this family you already know um if you follow the channel for a while the cassowary is one of my favorite animals in the game i'm not sure if i'll include it in um october lake but i have made a video for it in my previous park bill if you want to check that out um but yeah these are incredibly uh cool order of birds. For me, I personally like them because they are quite um, reminiscent of, I think, um, non-avian dinosaurs so back in the day. Uh, of course, ostriches themselves are dinosaurs, all birds are, uh, taxonomically speaking, but they just resemble things like, you know, ornithomimids or, you know, just kind of um, some of the weirdest theropods, I guess. And they look, I don't know, they feel like the closest we could get to seeing some of those animals. And I think it's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, ostriches are super interesting. Of course, they're uh, famous for being the largest bird. They also lay the largest eggs. And they're just uh, really interesting. Of course, there's that myth that they get nervous and they stick their heads in the ground. That's, of course, um, a huge myth. They can't do that. That would be a horrible evolutionary mechanism. Like, imagine if you get scared and all you can do is just stick your head in the ground. That's just not going to do anything for anyone involved. So, you know, of course, that is a bit of a myth. But um, I, I personally think they're really interesting animals. I say this with every animal in the park. They're all, they're all very cool. They've got a beautiful um, feathering, I think, which is quite underrated. Because, of course, compared to the other ratites, um, the others are a bit more, like, visually interesting, of course. Like, for example, the cassowary has got those beautiful blue colours and the, the comb on its head. Um, the emus, for example, have a bit of blue on them sometimes as well. So, you know, the, the ostriches are likely the least kind of visually interesting for a lot of people. I think they're, they're still quite cool because, especially with the males, the, the really deep black of their, their feathers stands out so much in the savannas. And the, the bright white of the wingtips and stuff like that really, I think, shine through. But yeah, they're, they're really interesting. Um, if they get annoyed, they're known to spit, which is... Uh, <laughs> I've always been very wary of that when I've, I've gone to a zoo um, about like whether or not I'm going to get spat on by an ostrich. That that just seems like you know not not a good um no not a good way to spend a the day there. So yeah, um, they also 
kind of a in a, a lot of languages, uh, especially, and I'm not 100% sure on this. For example, in my um, native country in Malaysia, in Malay, ostriches are known as burung unta, and unta means camel. And in fact, if you look at their um, scientific name, they're called Stuthio camelus. And uh, it's interesting how they're related to camels. They're not obviously related to camels, but like I assume it's because of the fact that they both are good at living in really arid climates and they have ways to, you know, reserve water and stuff. But I am not sure by any means. Um, so that's just a random suggestion on my part. I'm not 100% sure, but they are, the ostriches themselves are really good at keeping water um, like storing water for dry periods of time. Um, but yeah, that's the ostriches for you. I would like to talk more about them, but it is a bit of a short episode. As you can see on screen, we've actually just finished a bit of a staff area, and that's going to be the main kind of guest facility as well for this part of the zoo. So there's going to be um, shops there and stuff. And as you can see, there's a plaza just over there, a very small plaza, but a plaza nonetheless. And here I'm making a shelter for this habitat. Nothing too fancy, it's gonna be, actually, I say nothing too fancy, this is actually one of my favorite kind of shelter situations I've built for the zoo so far. It's kind of um, a zigzaggy kind of um, fabric thing. I think it looks really nice and I'm very happy with how it turns out. But while we're doing that, let's just quickly talk about the, um, the other animal that we're gonna be including, which is the sable antelope, which is one I haven't actually used in any of my park builds, and I really should do because they are beautiful. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Like, the coloration, the um, the horns, the little mane on its back, incredibly beautiful animal. Um, they're quite sexually dimorphic as well. The male is a lot larger and has um, significantly longer antlers, um, and they can be a bit darker as well. They, they get almost completely uh, deep black, whereas uh, females tend to be uh, brighter, more more kind of a ready, ready bright brown color. Um, and in the wild, they tend to live about 20 years or so. They live in the savannah, of course. Um, they can go into woodlands when the savannah gets a bit too dry. They form pretty relatively large herds. And um, they're pretty good at escaping predators because of those gigantic horns. Um, in the wild, they've really seen uh, loads of big cats attacking, attacking sable antelopes and just failing completely because they're so good at keeping the horns, uh, sorry, keeping the predators away with the horns. In fact, sometimes even killing lions, which is, you know, if you have a weapon like that or a defensive mechanism like that, in a place with so many, you know, apex predators, you know, you're gonna want to use them, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really beautiful animal, and I'm very glad to to have it in the park. I considered a few other species for this habitat, like the zebra. Um, I also considered the wildebeest, but I thought the sable antelope really deserved a bit more love here, so I included it. And as you can see, the habitat is coming towards its end now. Uh, we're including some enrichment there, just in the form of um a few foraging pits, a few little different bits here and there for for the different animals. When it comes to foliage for these savanna habitats, it's a bit tricky to work with. Of course, we're based in a taiga biome, and I don't want to use just out of nowhere, like I don't want to just plop down like an acacia or um, an umbrella, like an, um, what's it called, an umbrella thought acacia, or like, you know, even a baobab or something like that, just wouldn't fit in the zoo. So I'm still restricting myself to taiga and temperate foliage. By the way, apologies if you can hear some noise or some construction going on nearby, which is always great. But yeah, so I still have to use taiga foliage, and it's a little bit tricky to kind of keep that savanna vibe. And the way I found best to do it is to make use of this drain grass here to get that arid vibe, while still using some of the the kind of more temperate and taiga trees in a very sparse manner. So just at the corners of the habitat, so it looks like they cleared out the main area of the habitat for the animals, but some of the trees on the sides, they just left them be. And I think it works pretty well. And of course, blending in that drain grass with some of the more native foliage, like diamond leaf willows, the bracken, I think that all really helps. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this habitat turned out. Like I said, it was challenging working on the fact that it is in fact just a square, but I think uh, it ended up looking quite good. I actually ended up using some of these uh, river 
I can't remember what they call River Bush Willows, something like that. I think they look really nice, and um, they add a bit more dryness almost to this part of the park. But yeah, that is it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Leave suggestions for what you want to see next. Do you like the video? Of course, if you did like today's uh, episode, do you subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. Thank you so much, as always, for the support. We are now nearly at 2,100 subscribers, which is so nice. And um, yeah, just thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> and um, as always, do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.